A year after an explosion at a major port devastated Beirut, there was another explosion, this time at a warehouse on Lebanon's northern border. It killed 20 people. And so far, what we know is that the warehouse was being used to store fuel that had been smuggled into the country. These kinds of black market operations are becoming more and more common as the country spirals into one of the worst economic meltdowns in world history and completely runs out of resources. Everything from fuel for cars and electricity for houses to cancer-fighting medicine. And there doesn't seem to be any relief in sight. Matthew Castle joins me now from Beirut. Matthew, how bad is the situation in Lebanon at the moment? When the Lebanese civil war ended in 1990 and this country sought to rebuild, it went massively into debt. During that period, it also relied heavily on foreign currency coming in from the diaspora. In 2011, when the Arab uprisings happened and unrest spread throughout the Middle East and North Africa, that money started to slow down. To try to encourage investment into Lebanon, many politicians and the banks introduced ridiculously high interest rates. We're talking as high as 15%. Now, many people criticized it as a Ponzi scheme. They said that period was rife with corruption and it was completely unsustainable. And sure enough, a few years later in 2019, when the government needed money, rather than introduce a tax on the wealthy, it tried to introduce a tax on WhatsApp. As a result, there was panic in the streets. Many Lebanese rushed to their banks to try to withdraw their US dollars and other foreign currency. And in response, the banks shut completely. In the past two years since then, we've seen this crisis only worsen as the Lebanese lira has lost almost 90% of its value. That's made it a lot harder to import goods into the country. It's created shortages of basic goods across Lebanon and skyrocketing prices for Lebanese. So how did the country reach this point? So just to give you an idea, I've been coming to this country for 15 years. I lived here for five of those years and I've never seen it as bad as it is now. And the fear is it's only getting worse. There are shortages of goods, prices have skyrocketed, fuel is largely unavailable. Just to give you an idea, we were out in the street the other day and we saw a man filling up his car with water bottles filled with gasoline. When asked where he acquired that gasoline, he said on the black market. Many Lebanese are resorting to purchasing goods, including medicine, on the black market because they're just not available in this country. And do people there see light at the end of the tunnel? Well, right now, there isn't even a government in Lebanon, and there hasn't been one in over a year. And so much of the foreign aid and foreign investment that is desperately needed in this country is contingent on there not only being a government, but for that government to make a number of reforms. Now, for many Lebanese, there's a much bigger problem, and that is the continued existence of what they call a corrupt political class that's running this country. In 2019, they sought to overthrow that political class, and they didn't succeed. So tragically, now many Lebanese don't find any answers or lo aren't looking for a solution inside of Lebanon, but instead are thinking they have to leave this country to find that better life abroad. Matthew, thank you. That's Matthew Castle in Beirut.